talked to her about that. She said, I don't have a problem waiting two more. Vote on a no. We better not get into a tax. All right, everyone ready? No. No. Good evening, everyone. It is February 20th, 2013. It is a um, meeting of the North Kingstown School Committee. This is a special meeting to do our budget workshop. So if everyone could rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Three, could you please call the roll? Kimberly Page. Here. Larry Cerisi. Here. Linda Avanzato. Here. John Biscardin. Here. Cheryl Clarkin. Robert Jones. Here. William Mudge. Here. Julia Hell. Here. Thank you. All right. That brings us into uh, superintendent's report. Dr. J didn't have anything. Um, did you want me to mention some of our student athletes who over the weekend oh, um, have stayed in the states? Yes. Yes. Just for an update in the states um, boys swimming, we had. Um, right, so somebody's going to have to help me out with Boris's last name. Mm -hmm. um, Carlo. Yeah. Uh, Boris uh, Palisi. Paratalisi, thank you. Um, Boris um, came in first in the 100-meter um, freestyle. He came in second in the 50-meter um, 50 heat freestyle. And the 200-meter medley, medley composed of Boris, um, Ben Rudman, Mike Toolman, and Matt Weber came in first um, at state. So congratulations to them. Also, Mike Toolman came in second in the 100-meter butterfly and second in the 50-yard freestyle. Congratulations to the girls team. Um, Samantha Pelletier came in um, fifth in the 50, or I'm sorry, the 500-meter freestyle, and she came in fourth in the 200-meter freestyle. And um, hmm. Emily Landon came in second in the 100-meter freestyle and third in the 50-meter um, freestyle. Also over the weekend in boys and girls track, in boys track, we had in the eight, I'm sorry, um, the 1500 uh, meters. We had Dalen Smith who came in first, but um, we also had in the 600 meter running event. We had Zach Emery came in first in the state, and Ben Stewart came in fourth. And in girls track, we had um, Beth Nunnery came in fourth in the 3000 meters. Um, but in um, first, we had for the 55 hurdles, we had Maria. Um, Bolbrook. So congratulations to all those students for this weekend in the track uh, state finals and swimming. So that brings us to citizens' comments. No citizens' comments. No. All right, we have a few. Th we have. Um, <clears throat> pot um, we need to have an approval of the um, potential NEA layoffs. So do I have a motion to approve that list? So moved. Second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes. Great. We have, um, we have two names for the school committee representative to the audit committee. We had um, we have Mr. August, who is on our list, and I believe uh, late this afternoon we got another one. Another name of Matt Leonard. If you, if you rec did everybody receive that email? Yes. So, and we can uh. we can send up to three names to the town council, Mr. Sreesey. Uh Madam Chair, I know the charter requires us to send um, three names, and um, at this point we only have two names. So I would um, motion to send both uh, names forward to the uh, town council and um, obviously inform them as, that we don't have the required third name uh, as required by the charter. So. Second. Yes, Mrs. I'm, I'm not entirely certain that it, we are required to send three names. I don't know how it's exactly worded 
I mean, it, yeah, I don't I know if it's. Agree. <laughs> Can you quote the statute, Mr. Cerisi? Regardless, there have been occasions when we've sent less than three. So on this occasion, we're sending less than three. Both of the names that we're sending are highly experienced people who would just um, serve the town and the school system very well on the audit committee. So um, I think we're. I think that the town council will be satisfied. Can yes, Mr. Um, Buscardin. If, if there's debate on how the chart is worded, can't we look it up and, and see? It's in the packets. Yeah, it was in your packets. I have it right here. In our packets it says, <clears throat> one member shall, who shall not be an elected official or town committee shall be selected from a list of three names presented to the town council by the school committee. We have advertised this more, or the town has advertised this for us more than once, and we have not, up until today, we only had one name. So I am to the point where I think that we're just not getting any other names. So mm -hmm. we have in the past submitted less names if we just don't have them. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mudge. Uh, first of all, uh, did we advertise for a school committee rep at all? It was advertised. Did school committee advertise it? Yeah, it was advertised I don't we twice by the town council. Well, the reason I say that is uh, uh, I think some of the circumstances have changed somewhat. Uh, in fact, I got Matt Leonard's uh, 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 submittal yesterday for the, the position. And also because of the uh, actions of the town council, okay, uh, we no longer need to have a, a, a CPA or or uh, anyone else for that matter in terms of qualifications. It could be anybody at large. And I, I, I'd like to suggest that we we advertise for some people that are at large, okay, candidates that might be interested in, in this. And, and, and not that it's going to sound political, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, at the last minute, we uh, is Matt Lund still ahead of the Democratic Town Committee? Uh, I don't think so. Is that relevant? Yeah, I think. Because, you know, it, uh, we're not you know, picking, you know, all we're doing is sending names. Well, I understand. We, don't, we don't pick the people. I understand, but, but uh, because of the, the, it's been unclear to me anyway, the process, and maybe I missed something along the line, but, uh, and, and Matt uh, submitted his uh, application yesterday, I guess, right? By email? Um, yes, it was by email. Yeah, yesterday. So, I mean, uh, maybe other people should have an opportunity to do that. Maybe we should have invite the head of the Republican Town Committee also in to give an application. Well, <laughs> he was welcome you know. to. We yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't think it was that clear is all I'm saying. It was restrictive. See, ours was restrictive oh, to a candidate that is CPA, I think, or or uh, no, I don't think so. no, I don't. I don't believe Mr. Leonard is a CPA. No, he's not. No. <clears throat> Mr. Buscardin. Um, Ms. Page, do you know uh, in what fashion, what medium was used for, for the advertisement? I mean, was it print? Was it on, on the town website? I mean, what was the... Uh, it was anybody? in the Standard Times. Okay, so it was in print. All right. Yeah. And, and they ran it a couple different times? Twice. Twice? Uh, and uh, how would we have... If we were to do it, how would we have done it? Same. Same thing. Okay, that's my... So, in essence... Put on the blister of though and ask people? Uh, uh, well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if that's really going to – I mean, I see your point, but yeah. the listserv is kind of restrictive, whereas the Standard Times is – anybody can buy the Standard Times. Mm -hmm. Listserv is restricted to people on listserv. Um, so I, I, I don't know if listserv would really be any more efficient than print or on the town website. Um, as far as that – as far you know, I mean, we, if, we, if we were to run it, Bill, I don't know if we would have run the ad. I don't know if we would have done anything different. So it was run twice, I think – that pretty much covered all the bases. I, I certainly would have put it on the list of anything else, you know, because it was our representative. All right. I saw Mr. Jones hands and uh, Mr. Cerisi. Um, um, thank you. Um, I have a little familiarity with this since I served on the audit committee. Um, and, and I know um, um, Dick August is here. Um, I, I'm not sure when there was a vacancy, whether it was advertised or not. I know I certainly didn't find out about it from you know, reading the Standard Times, no offense to the Standard Times. Um, I actually found out about it <laughs> ultimately just through word of mouth um, and people talking about it. 
um, and then people encouraging to get volunteers. And, and I guess I would say I was initially sort of reluctant in the sense of, since I don't have a CPA either, um, but then understanding that the committee had those people and that they were really just looking for uh, people with, with a background and an interest. And then having submitted my, my name, you know, no offense to the town council, but it sort of languished for a few months um, while they waited to decide various other items uh, that were of higher priority. Um, the town audit's over, and both Mr. August and Mr. Leonard are, are well qualified. Um, I don't see the harm in, in maybe, you know, beating the sick a little more just to get a, a full, uh, you know, full thing to, to maybe find, uh, you know, someone who's reluctant because I think, like I thought, that you had to have a certain set of qualifications. The town has asked for our names by March 1st. That, that is why, you know, it has okay. been advertised twice, and so that's why we actually put it on this agenda, because they asked for it by March 1st. Mr. Cerisi. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. We've gone through this process several times. It's been advertised this time around the same way it's been advertised every other time we've done this. <clears throat> it's open. There's nothing restrictive about it. There's nothing hidden about it. Two people applied. Up to three people could apply to be sent forward. We're sending forward the names that we have. There's a motion on the table, and it's been seconded. Time to call the vote. Is there any further discussion? Well, I'd, say you know, I'd say thank you, Ms. Page, because, uh, Ms. Tracy, I just didn't realize March 1st was the deadline, so... Uh, that having been made clear, then then I I understand a little bit more of of the need for having to take care of this business tonight. All right. Is there any other discussion? All right, Lorraine, why don't we take a roll call vote? Linda Avanzato. Yes. John Biscardin. Yes. Larry Cerisi. Yes. Robert Jones. Yes. William Mudge. Yes. Kimberly Page. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so that brings us to item C, the 2013-2014 school budget. Mrs. King, do you have any updates? Um, yes, late last week, and actually I had a, uh, a meeting to finalize the information today, we did hear from the trust regarding our increase in health care and dental rates for FY14. It's actually a little bit earlier than usual, so it's really good news that we did receive. Uh, I met with Keith Dempty from the trust today, and he confirmed that our health care increase will be approximately 6% for FY14. And dental will actually not be an increase at all. It will be a decrease of approximately 3%. So that will save us from what we had budgeted approximately $272,000. Um, so that's actually very good information that we had. Part of the reason why our rates went down so much, at, um, just so you'll know, is there's, there are several factors that go into the trust pieces. There are some credits and whatnot. Um, but also, too, there would be two things. We did have a lot of people drop off of our coverage in July 1st because of the changes that the school committee made at the end of June of last year. Um, so that really helped, um, as well as um, some other information and, and some somewhat lower claims that we've had. We are in... Um, a pool with the town, so the town will enjoy uh, lower rates as well. Um, I'm not sure what they budgeted, but um, a 6% increase is actually, I know it's a lot of money dollar-wise, but when you get under the double digits and health care increases these days, those are actually very, very, very good numbers. Mr. Cerisi. Thank you, uh, Mrs. King, and it's good to finally have some bit of a good news. Um, so with that new information, the requested increase actually decreases by $272,000, and that would bring our bottom line number down to the information we have is $58,865,891. Yes. And so I would offer a motion at this time to amend our uh, previous request, which was 
$137,891 million to $58,865,891, which represents the $272,000 recognized savings in health care. Could you repeat that? Oh, yeah, I didn't no, catch kidding, that. Kidding, no, kidding, kidding. Second. Here to get it. Mr. Mr. Amaj, I think the number you are listening for is 58865891 Correct. Before we start making motions and everything else, do you think you could entertain an idea of getting something from the Budget Committee? I would certainly. That number can be further reduced if those well, <laughs> motions can be made and passed after this motion. Well, just courtesy, I think. Mr. Beskar. This, um, this question is might be a, a little um, off, uh, off target here, but it is related to the budget and, and specifically something Mr. Mudge had just asked. I'm curious, Mr. King, why do we, when we submit the number to the town, why do we factor in the, um, the tax rate? Why don't we just give them a percentage over last year's budget. You know, in other words, if we're going if we're asking for 3.39, and that that's re represents the tax rate, that's not necessarily what we're looking for over last year's budget. Why why don't we just submit a number over last year's budget? That is what that number is because we don't have anything to do with the tax rate. So what we do is we put our budget all together, and we know that by law, Rhode Island state law, we are only available, uh, allowed now this year, FY14, I'm sorry, FY14 and going forward to ask for 4% more than the prior year. So we put all of our numbers together. We know what all of our revenues are and our expenses are, and we need to stay within that, that frame. So it's not really tax rate we're setting. We're really more trying to see where our revenues are going to be, where our expenses are going to be, and, and how we can fit into that. Well, and, okay, and then just to dovetail with that explanation, I think it's important then for the budget subcommittee to actually do a presentation on the numbers that you guys have, have, have because I don't, I thought, you know, every time I think I know, I look at something else and I realize I don't know. So I, I think we need to have some clarity on the numbers. I, I personally would like some clarity on the numbers that um, the budget subcommittee has come up with compared, you know, compared to um, this this uh, four percent, or in this case, was it three point three nine now, Doctor? Yes. Because from what I've saw, I've seen of the of the work from the budget subcommittee, three point three nine represents a one point eight two. No, I, I am think, I confused? Uh, yeah, I think I think what is getting everyone confused is that they are taking out of context the increase in expenditures from the decrease in revenues because the town is not, our town tax funding is not our only source of revenue. So while expenses are only going up uh, one point, your 1.8 percent because we've had to make adjustments already because we have to stay within the 4 percent to the town. See, that's really our, the number that it ends up being, you know, at the end because we can project our other revenues, we can project our expenses, and then we know that we can really only project 4 percent from the town. So we need to stay within those parameters. So what's happening is people are taking out of context the increase in expenses and not considering the decrease in other revenues. So that would be a decrease, projected decrease in revenue from the state, small amount, and the decrease in, in Jamestown tuitions. So that, that, I believe, is where your confusion is. And I'll, I'd be glad to sit down and show that to you, but you can't look at the bottom line and say, oh, your expenses only went up 2 percent, so we only need to ask for 2 percent more from the town, not when there are other sources of revenue that are also going down. It's a good explanation, though. Uh, may I? I um, see I, Mr. Sreci and then I see Mr. Okay. Mudge. Um, I'm certainly, uh, I, I believe the part of the reason we were meeting again tonight was to give the budget subcommittee some time and an opportunity um, to present um, any information that they wanted to present. So I'm certainly not opposed to them. 
presenting any information and having some additional discussion and and if need be any additional votes um, what I'm simply doing at this point is making a motion to reduce our request our previous request by the two hundred and seventy two thousand dollars that Miss King has pointed out to us that the district has recognized in savings in, in the health care cost. So that's all I'm trying to accomplish right now is to reduce that previous request number by that $272,000. And we can take that vote, and we can certainly have more discussion and more votes if the committee so chooses. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to have a discussion that's all over the map and out of context. So let's just try to follow an orderly process here. I mean, we know right now, based on the information that Ms. King has provided us, we can reduce the request by another $272,000. So let's get that done, and then let's continue on with the conversation. So I, I'm asking if we could please just take that vote and then certainly continue on with the conversation. Mr. Mudge. Uh, yes, does anybody have a computer? Bring it online. Because I, I don't believe that we're restricted to a 4%. Yes, uh, we are. I have the statute. I can refer to you 104%. Yeah, please do it now, because I think we're restricted. The towns are restricted to a 4%. Tax increase. Not School committees are order. restricted to 104 okay. percent of, of prior year. Point of order. Okay. I'll send it to you. Order, Mr. Madam, Madam Chair, this discussion is that off. Is. This discussion is off topic from the motion. It's not the off table. topic because it's germane to everything we're doing here tonight. Can we now we can simply get on this, the state regs and pull those numbers out. Okay. I, I think they have been. The motion on the table is simply to, at this point, to reduce the this budget the request from last time by 272,000. I think Mr. Mudge, if he wants to get into that conversation, needs to come after the vote on the right. motion. Exactly. It's okay to ask no a question. It's okay to ask a question. Yeah, I, I'm going to. I'm going to um, rule in favor of the point of order. And do we have any other questions in regard to the motion on the table? I know. I know. I know. All right, Lorraine, could we take a roll call vote, please? John Viscardin. Yes. Larry Cerisi. Yes. Robert Jones. Yes. William Mudge. I'm sorry? Could you? No? I said yes. William Mudge. Yeah. Said yes. Yep. Okay. Kimberly Page. Do we have what Mr. Mudge said? I, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be <laughs> difficult. I can't. Yes. Yeah. Okay, yes. thank you. <laughs> Kimberly Page. Yes. They got you down three times. Linda Avanzato. Yes. Thank you. The motion passes unanimously. <sighs> Mr. Cerisi. Madam Chair, I, I would ask at this time we please uh, allow uh, Mr. Jones, um, who's chairing the Budget Subcommittee, an opportunity to present and review some of the um, information and the uh, questions that he may have. Um, Mr. Jones? Yes. Th thank you, Mr. Cerisi. Um, I guess I'd start, you know, to Mrs. King's comments is I think it's important for the, the town and our citizens to recognize, um, you know, the two sides of the equation. But I, but I think it's important to, for them to recognize whether, uh, you know, we the budget, the new budget we've adopted at, at 58 uh, million 500 and change, you know, represents only a one point. 8% or so increase in expenditures that, you know, the administration and the committee, you know, ha has done a, a, a job in, in trying to, to look at what is the, you know, minimal required maintenance of effort to at least advance what we did this year into next year, uh, given some of the constraints that exist, such as increases in health care um, and some other factors. What, what I think you know, clouds a little bit of the issue. And what I think is a fair point for taxpayers to know is saying if, the, if we're only increasing our expenditures by 1.8 percent or potentially, you know, lower, um, why, does the, why is there a 3.4 percent increase? And so that leads, I believe, to a discussion we should have on revenues. Um, I, I think it's clear that, uh, you know, that the gap represents 447,000 of of lower revenue, and, and the real question to ask is, um, you know, should we have a more thorough discussion on that side of the house? 
You know, for example, we're budgeting 166,000 less in state aid than the governor's budget. We're budgeting 50,000 less than what was last year's state aid. Um, you know, those discussions are germane in that every dollar of revenue we underestimate or that we do not budget for um, is, is money that has to be made up by the taxpayers, um, assuming that the town council, you know, approves our bottom line. And, and I'd hate that the town council to look at our bottom line and think that they can reduce it more simply because they're looking at the tax levy side when I think the, the administration and the, the committee has done a, a pretty good job of trying to hold the line on expenditures. And, and so I think we, you know, we cloud the issue a little bit with citizens by not being clear that there's a 447,000 revenue gap that I think we could have a, a more thorough discussion about whether that gap is really 447,000. And, and I think it's important because if you look at last year's example where what was required by the town or was at least budgeted for in state aid was 500,000 and something less than what eventually came in. And the committee is then forced because we can't go back and, and just say, well, we're going to have more revenue and go back to the town and just say that. The town requires us to meet the new bottom line. And so last year's committee had to go back and make a lot of difficult cuts in May, cuts that impacted, you know, if hundreds, if not thousands of students and families. And so I think, you know, again, the more that, that we do our best to not only do as good a job on the, as we did on the expenditure side, on the revenue side, um, gives a little more flexibility in our budget and also gives a little more flexibility when it comes to our discussion with the town council. Um, for example, I know we had a discussion about building use revenue, and we talked about it a couple months ago on the 50000 So, you know, the question's out there. Does our, does our funding budget include reappropriation of 50000 of building use revenue? And I believe the answer is sorry, no. Sorry, the answer is no. I'm right. sorry. No, it doesn't. And so the, the question is, if you look at the actuals for the last three years, that's revenue that has been a steady flow of revenue. And so the question, I guess, hangs out there is why don't we recognize some of this revenue? So, I mean, again, I'm comfortable with saying that I think the 58500 is a is a fairly good number from the expenditure side. I'm not as comfortable to say that that the gap which we present in terms of a funding differential is necessarily as accurate a gap. And so, you know, Mr. Sharisi has said numerous times, and I agree with him, that there's still more work to be done. I would just say that, you know, we should have a discussion and flexibility with the council, um, you know, to work on both sides of this equation. I think potentially there's more room on the expenditure side, but, but I would say that, you know, limiting to a 1.8 percent increase in this environment is a pretty good job on the expenditure side. Um, and we haven't had the discussion of, of ways that, you know, I think we owe the citizens, which is some of the vision the superintendent has laid out of, of how to take the education of this, of our, of our, mem of our students here and, and take it to higher levels and what it requires to do that. I think there's some big ideas that, you know, the administration and this committee could tee up, um, which I think could, can do that um, looking forward. Um, and so I would like to have those discussions at some point. Um, but I'd like us not to think that, you know, at 58.5 and saying we need a 3.3, you know, 3.4 percent funding increase, you know, which is going to generate a lot of discussion on the tax levy side is where we get the flexibility to avoid making more cuts when potentially there's revenue enhancements that we can plug in and avoid that. So if, if you know, this is not the right venue or time to do it, I understand that. But I, I would like just to be clear that on the expenditure side, it's 1.8 percent. And I think that's a pretty good job done by, again, by this administration, the committee. 
you know, whether it needs 3.4% in tax levies is another question that I think deserves a little more attention. I see your hand, Mr. Streese. I'm going to comment. I, I agree with you, Mr. Jones. This is um, at only 1.8% um, over what our budget was this past year with the amount of, of all our fuels going up, um, heating with, with gasoline, with the insurance going up by 5%. I mean, this is a very stark budget. We are not asking for our expenditures um, at a horribly high rate. So, I mean, we have, um, you know, thank you to Dr. Auger and, and Mrs. King for working on a budget that has been so prudent. I mean, this is really cut. It does um, ask the question of how do we move forward when we only – uh, when our expenditures are going up faster than what our um, what our increases are, so um, I agree with you. This is not an extravagant budget when it's only 1.8, considering the climate we're in, and we certainly have the consumer price index that is going up much higher than 1.8. Mr. Cerisi. Thank you, Madam Chair. And thank you, Mr. Jones. I, I think. I'm a little bit afraid to say this, but I think philosophically we're all on the same page. I think we just might have a different path of getting there. And, and I think if the revenue estimates come in better than we anticipate or budget for, I think you recognize that and we use that to offset some of the potential cuts that we've been <coughs> discussing. Um, but at the same time, you know, we've, I think we all agree, and we've said time and time again, to be very cautious of using one-time revenue as a way to fill a hole on a reoccurring expense. So I just want to make sure that we're mindful of that and we keep a good, conservative, safe practice as far as that goes. Um, I think when you talk about whether it be a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars of discrepancy or flexibility of estimated revenue in a fifty nine million dollar budget, I think you've pretty much done your job and you're pretty much cutting it close. Um, we've talked about it before. I've talk to town council members about it, and I'll be talking about it at town council meetings and at audit committee meetings. You can look in the town's budget, in a $20 million budget, there's anywhere between 800 and a $1 million of underestimated revenue in there every year. So we'll be having that discussion. And, you know, I think, you know, Mrs. King has said before, and, and anyone who's familiar with the budgeting and the finance and the accounting, you budget a $59 million budget to think you're going to spend exactly $59 million and not a penny less or a penny more is, you know, really not the case. So, you know, hopefully you spend less than you budgeted, but um, you're not going to end up exactly on that penny. I see. Mrs. Avanzato and Mr. Mudge. Okay, yeah. Just briefly, um, thank, I want to thank the Budget Subcommittee. I think the point that you made regarding the 1.8 is, is just very a very critical point that I, I think isn't understood, and I think it's, you can't really say it often enough. And I'm sure Mary understands it really well, so the rest of us need to have it explained a couple of times, and we need to say it publicly a couple of times so that people understand the drop in revenue um, is the reason why you see the higher amount. 1.8 is actually the increase in expenditures. That's a critical point. Um, in terms of the revenues, I think traditionally and by law, school committees aren't really revenue makers. Um, the town has the ability to raise revenues and, and raise taxes, and the schools, school departments are just another department of the town and are funded by them, and they're not really set up to raise revenue. However, as times get tighter and tighter, we've seen that change a little bit here and there. It's controversial. Um, and we've talked about a number of ways of doing that, advertising and um, just different out-of-the-box ways we've discussed here before with our partnerships and things that we've been trying to do. Um, it's still somewhat, I think, of a difficult proposition for a school department to become a revenue maker, but 
I mean, always open to that conversation. And the more we can do with that, as long as we're careful we're doing it right, um, the better. But I would agree, too, with um, what Mr. Cerisi said in terms of when you get to a certain point, you're talking about $50,000 in a $56 million budget, that's not a ton of money. Um, we've got to keep working every year, but I think we're really tight. We have a budget that has large swings in it, unlike the town budget. I think, although probably um, the town manager might disagree, it, we have a lot of elements in, in the school budget that has these automatic or these built-in large potential swings. Um, special education students coming in, not expecting. You could get two or three special education students in a six-month period. That could completely blow your budget up and change your budget by a half a million dollars. Something that I was discussing with um, Mrs. King is it's really important that this school committee have enough money in, in surplus every year so that we can handle these types of things that come up and we don't have to go back to the town and back to the taxpayers if we have additional special ed students, if we have a Jamestown tuition change, if we have um, snow, re you know, some items in our budget that just that, that swing large amounts. Um, those are constantly in flux for us. So all in all, I think uh, I would agree with Mr. Jones that I think we're pretty lean. Um, and thanks, thanks to the Budget Subcommittee. <coughs> I don't mean we're lean thanks to the Budget Subcommittee. I just mean thank you to the Budget Subcommittee as a separate. <laughs> Mr. Mike, uh, sorry. Uh, could you just quote that, that final number here? I think I missed what we, we appropriated or requested. That we requested? Yeah. 58,865,891. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what, what we basically said with that in, in the ballpark is that that represents about a million-dollar increase from last year's budget to cover what we project as the, uh, we project as the uh, cost, which includes 1 percent for teachers, it includes uh, uh, medical, it includes pension costs and things like that. And uh, that tells me, and it should be certainly – uh, made uh, clear to the public that that's what, at this point in time, we feel is necessary to maintain this, the educational system in North Kingstown in fiscal year 14 as we have in fiscal year 13. I think that's important to let the community know that. And uh, uh, so they know what they're supporting or what they're and what they're getting, uh, you know, for the money. And it, it puts a, a number on this is what you have today and this is what you can expect tomorrow. And I think that's a good start. Now, there are some, some revenue issues that will come into play, obviously, in the future. But, you know, we still have, and, and I'm concerned about this, okay? We still have, with this, this number putting in here, we've only put in, what, 13 or or. $13,000 out of our, our $1.3 million anticipated surplus. So I, I suspect, rightfully so, that the council may be asking us or the community to, you know, pony up some of that towards reducing the, the tax burden on the taxpayers. After all, you know, either through efficient means or through additional revenues or higher taxes in the past, we've accumulated, you know, one point you know, $4 million budget surplus, $1.3 million budget surplus. And I think that the, the community, with some reason and understanding, could expect that, you know, some of that money could be put back into the current budget even, what won't affect us, but to uh, lower the tax rate. They, they pony the up, they pony the up before, okay, and when we get a revenue, we should possibly share it. Now, there certainly are a lot of other things we can do with the money as well. And that's one of the next steps, I think, what we have to do is put together a plan is, if, you know, if we're going to have a surplus, how are we going to use it? Are we going to give it, give some back? Are we going to do other initiatives? Are we going to do other work in the school? But, you know, we just can't let it sit there and, you know, wait for the, uh, you know, waiting for something to happen in the future. So uh, I look at this as positive. It gives the community some reassurance that they can expect what they had last year 
uh, in terms of their programs and athletics and sporting events and so forth. And uh, uh, there's no reason that we shouldn't be able to, one way or another, have sufficient revenues to maintain that next year. Thank you. Mr. Jones and then Mr. Cerisi. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Hold on no. a second. Um, Mrs. King. Mr. Mudge, I can refer you to RIGL 16-2-21.4B, 104% school committee request, FY14 budget. I, I know it's read that. I interpret that to be revenue, so I'll look at it again. Yeah, yeah. It specifically said school committee can only request of the town 104% because it, it scaled down in all the years. Yeah, it was from five, five and a quarter, yes. Right. Mr. Thank Jones you. and then Mr. Cerisi. Um, thank you, Mr. Thank King. you. Um, I, I know we, um, the Budget Subcommittee spent a lot of time obviously analyzing expenditures and, and, and part, most of that is focused obviously on looking for areas of efficiency or, or perhaps areas that w we might uh, take a little more, more decrease in and, and, and apply some managerial techniques or other ways to, to sit, for solve that. I would note that um, we went through based on, you know, the superintendent's point about supplies, and we tried to go through, you know, the metrics that, that he mentioned and, and really apply it, and, and I'll give Mr. Mudge credit for, for really doing a lot of the legwork for the subcommittee on this, um, and trying to put some, some metrics using the enrollment and other points. And, and this was the one area that the subcommittee actually recommended um, Putting money back into and raising it back from 404538 to 425,000, and I would recommend, you know, the committee seriously think about putting that in, and without offsetting the the gap, um, recognize at least a corresponding amount on either the state aid number to bring us up to what the town manager has already said on the. 10750 and change number, or recognizing uh, building use revenue, which historically has come in at least 50000 and we're budgeting only 6000 and budgeting at least the amount to cover that increase to meet the 425000 mark for supplies, which I think there's a lot of good metrics behind why that number makes sense. Um, and, and using the revenue enhancement, um, either of those options, so it's, it's somewhat budget neutral at, at this aspect. I really think that if you look at the supply number, it's sort of been an area up and down. Um, I think there's a lot of good numbers in terms of using the enrollment and the budgeted per pupil amount that the 425 number makes sense. Um, and so I would offer the committee a discussion about actually putting at least 20,000 back in that number and using revenue enhancements to, to cover it, to make it um, neutral in terms of the bottom line. Mr. Cerisi and Mrs. Avanzato. I want to see that. I just want to back up for one second on the fund balance discussion. Um, approximately $1.3 million in, in fund balance at this time. Um, you know, our position on that in the past, and I hope going forward, remains the same, that we're not going to fill reoccurring budget gaps with one-time infusions from a one-time funding source, which is the fund balance. We all know that creates a structural deficit, and I think that's what's gotten many cities and towns and states all across the country in a lot of trouble, that we find ourselves in or other states and find themselves in at this time. I do not want to fund reoccurring costs with money from fund balance. I would like to fund one-time expenditures, some of which we've talked about, if we're going to use money from fund balance, not use it as an infusion to the general operating budget to lower our request. Um, I don't want to use it to find something to spend it on. You know, if I have extra money in my bank account or extra money at the end of the month. I don't look to find something to spend it on. I keep it for what it's intended for, a rainy day for incidentals, and I hope that's what we continue to do. Um, and lastly, as far as 
decreasing our request by using fund balance. Again, you're setting it. I mean, how many times do we have to talk about this? You're setting yourself up for a structural deficit. The town council has a $10 million fund balance. They don't use money from that fund balance to decrease their request for new tax revenues every year. They don't take money from their fund balance and decrease their request for new tax revenues every year to fund their budget. They use it for one-time expenditures, as it should be used for. So this, this philosophy like a, a fund balance is a bad thing. You know, we, we need to get on the same page with that message because I think we're, we're sending a very fractured message. And Mrs. King, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know if it's a, a ride recommendation or state recommendation, but I do believe they recommend we we have a certain percentage of our budget as a, as a fund balance. Yeah, I think I've seen a couple of different uh, percentage recommendations. I can tell you that our 1.4 million, you can do the math yourself, is about 2%. I've seen anywhere from 5 to 10% as a recommended amount. So, we're, I mean, we're not even close to that. Um, and and I, I do agree with Mr. Jones on, on the revenue piece, but we do have to understand that it's, it's February. And by the time May comes, we might, unfortunately, have more information on expenditures that make our expenditures go up, too. So we have to keep all of that in mind, too, as we're as we're trying to adjust things, because we're not talking, you know, millions of dollars in revenue that are not budgeted for. So there are a lot of things that we know career tech is definitely an open item, definitely an issue that we've seen a huge increase in in this year, and we are expecting another big increase in outflux of students to career tech next year as well. That's money. Um, as indicated, the special education, uh, we have a great, great special education department. But you never know. Uh, you know, if we have more students come into the district, they need to be serviced properly. Um, charter schools, same thing. You know, we, we do our best in estimating if we have more students going to charter schools. Again, um, the same thing even with Jamestown students coming in. I, I've worked with the business manager to know how many, we clearly know how many students are graduating out from Jamestown. I know how many students she has. Um, in middle school, but clearly they can't also tell us that all those students are coming. So we have a lot of things that could change those numbers the other way as well. So I, I just would encourage us all to keep that in mind as well. It's, it's February 20th for a budget that we're starting July 1st. So I, I, I just hope that we can keep that in mind. Okay, I see Mrs. Avanzato and then Mr. Biscardin and Mr. Mudge. Just two quick points. Um, just to piggyback on what uh, Mr. Cerisi just said about using surplus funds for year-to-year -year expenses going forward, uh, we were advised by the audit that was done by the town council, the Wadovic report, to, to not do that. I think they specifically talked about um, and recommended and advised the school committee that we not do that. There's plenty of things that we need that we could put that money aside for uh, building needs and one-time expenses like that, but usually we, we do so, and then that money gets just chipped away by incoming students we didn't expect or things similar to what Mrs. King was just talking about. So um, I would agree with the comment about not doing that because we've been warned not to directly by the auditors. Mm -hmm. um, the other question I have uh, for Bob is about the adjustment that you were, just so I understand, because I don't have the paperwork, Oh, I do have the paperwork. You're recommending putting some money back into the supplies budget, the supply line item of the budget? Yes. And um, I know the committee hasn't had a lot of time to analyze the, the information we sent. Um, you know, took the, the per pupil account. We looked at the, the history of the line. Um, the account itself was, let me find it here, 56. 101 was, um, you know, was deducted by 67,000 in the current budget. You know, it, it's a line that's been up and down. If you look at the actuals in FY10, it was 386. It was cut by 50,000. It was held steady. It was put a lot back up, you know, in, F, in FY13, I think, to make up for the, the underfunding. Um, my point would be is that you know, this would this would start us on a track of, of having 
you know, a defined metric per pupil, you know, whether that's the right number or not, the administration can take a look at over the year. But, but using the, you know, the base numbers they gave us and looking at our enrollment to ensure, um, I think we should probably end up doing the same with technology at some point, but, you know, a set number per pupil. Um, and my argument would be is I think the 425 number makes more sense to, to sort of start baselining that. And I think, you know, it's a modest thing. We already know based on if we're going to use the, the, you know, the BEP review, which said, you know, use last year's number for state aid. If we're going to use, you know, we're, we're under, I say that, we're using a number that's 50,000 less than last year's state aid. So even if we recognize that, which we know the town has asked us to do, my fear is that the town is going to do that and then ask us to cut 50,000 in expenditures. So I would rather recognize that revenue and have thoughtful places to put it against, such as this, as opposed to waiting. Now, I understand Mrs. King's point, but if you look at, for example, tuition to other school districts, you know, in FY12 we spent 400000 This year we're budgeting 827000 So, um, you know, we can argue, not argue whether there's been an increase, there clearly has, but, you know, is doubling the budget a sufficient of contingency? Um, it's not as if we're not at least anticipating that in this budget. So, um, again, I, I would agree that there's some maneuver, you know, things are going to change a little bit. I just want to make sure that we clearly recognize that, you know, in a 1.8 percent expenditure budget, that the fact that there are potential revenue enhancements that could be made doesn't give cause that we're going to be asked to find other expenditure cuts to meet a lower number because the town council is worried about the revenue side of the tax levy. And so that's, again, my, my major point is that, you know, I don't want citizens to get confused when they see, you know, whether it's 3 percent or something, that's a funding solution that has to be worked out. But the expenditure side right now is only at 1.8 percent, even if we add back in a modest 20 percent for supplies. And clearly, we know that the town council is going to recognize 50,000 more in revenue than we're budgeting. So at least let's have some thoughtful areas to, to put it towards. And I think this is one area that, you know, in trying to get down as they were requested, perhaps we, we took too much of a, mm -hmm. of a cut. Kim, can I just follow up? Yes, yeah. Mrs. Evans, I don't. I can't disagree as far as supplies and technology as two areas that we hit every year. And we've been hitting these areas for years and years. And I'm sure it's some, many times during the school year, they, the administration has to shift things around because you can't go without certain things in a school district. Um, so I would agree that we probably have hit certain areas too hard. And I very much appreciate all the work and the specific detailed work that the Budget Subcommittee has done with recommendations on line items. My only reservation on voting on some of that tonight would be that the administration hasn't had the opportunity to vet the suggestions um, because they just came through. And I really haven't because I just, I don't actually have them. I don't know if they were emailed, but I don't have a copy, a hard copy of it in front of me. So. Um, Again, I totally appreciate the work that went in and that maybe some of these um, suggestions can be implemented. I just, I don't know that I could vote on it right now because I just don't have anything in front of me and I, and I haven't heard from the administration, which, you know, I need to before I make that kind of decision. Mr. Bur or, um, Dr. Dr. Jay and then Mr. Buskarden. Um, thank you. Um, I, I appreciate comments on, on both sides of this. You know, the, there are certainly, you know, a lot of recommendations that um, was sent today, and I appreciate that. I really haven't had enough time to sit down and look at all of these in, in particular. Um, so, you know, I'm not sure um, you can take just any any number here, um, paint or textbooks or um, electrical supplies. Um, I, I would need to talk to some staff members to find out if those cuts seem realistic and could replace some of the other cuts that we've been talking about. And um, I think for right now, I think we have a very responsible number that we're sending forward. And um, no matter what happens, I'm pretty certain that in the future we're going to need to revisit this 
and continue to um, look at ways to make reductions and so on and so forth and maybe some um, adjustments, just straight, you know, transfers. So, um, you know, I'd like to be given the time to kind of uh, look that over and pick this up when we meet again. This, this Mr. Buskerton, and then I guess my, my question will be to the committee. I saw your hand, Mr. Uh, we don't have a motion on the table. It's the sort of thing of where are we going next. But Mr. Buskerton, I'll, I'll give you the floor first. Well, thank you. I, I just wanted to clarify, I think, um, mostly for myself, Ms. King, this whole budget book, it is not – all recurring costs, or is this, or is, that, or this, is this book something you consider everything in here a recurring cost? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it, it's all, it's all the things that we have every year to operate the budget: salaries, benefits. I mean, to operate the school department: salaries, benefits. That's your biggest piece. Right. Uh, the maintenance of buildings, electricity, telephone, sewage, property insurance. So yes, all of that are all things that every year you would normally expect those costs in operating the budget. I think when we talk about one-time costs, we talk about things that might be an unexpected legal settlement, for example, um, an unexpected, um, no, no. I don't know, something bad happens to a building and, and the boiler has to be replaced. Those would be unexpected items that you would not expect to occur every year. But everything else in this budget are things that in your normal course of operating a school department you would see every year. Well, then I think we need to clarify um, then what we call a recurring cost and what we call an emergency cost because I'm looking at page 16 and it's technology-related supplies. That is not by definition a recurring cost because we do not get billed every year for that. that is decision, that's a decision we make. We make a decision to update technology-related supplies. Well, but you, so, you also expect every year that you will have some sort of expense for that because technology-related supplies would be, you know, someone needs a mouse and someone's computer breaks and you have cords and wires and so yeah, I mean, you expect that you're going to have some sort of those things every year. Also in technology would be, we know we have our, our voice messaging system. We have our Aspen student, you know, attendance system. So those, again, would be things that normally, no, we don't, I mean, we could get rid of our voice messaging system and we could get rid of our student attendance system, but normally they are those things that we would use in the course of a year. But, yeah, but the cost is not recurring in, in a fashion where you know that you can estimate a 10, like for health care or for dental or for salaries and benefits. You look at that this year and you can pretty much um, chart out what it's going to be five years from now. There, are, there is some control over things like supplies. So I, 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 while I, I understand we don't want to just put uh, the, uh, anything from the surplus, budget surplus into things like uh, a teacher or a, or a para or, or a, uh, something of that nature, which that truly is a recurring cost because we have it this year, and we're going to have it next year, and we'll have it the, the following year. Things that are more controllable, I think, is, is something that can be thought about is for using the budget surplus. In other words, if if, um, if, if Dr. O'Jay and the administration feels that it's, that it's a, a paramount to have um, more smart boards. But that, that, that's not in here, though. Something but, but, like so that why, is but why wouldn't here. you consider that a technology-related supply? See what I'm talking about? See what I'm saying? Because, we, because those are not things that you need to operate. The things that I indicated you do. You know, if someone calls and says, my mouse doesn't work, my computer's broken, my printer doesn't work, my copy machine is down, those are the things that you need to operate. We, we would like to have more smart boards, but we don't need more smart boards to operate, so those are not in this number. That would be something that I would consider a one-time capital hardware. influx. Yeah. Could you so, but you generally know, Mr. Biscarden, that every year you know that you do have some level of that, you know, you, you, you know, like I said, you know, your technology-related items. It's just like your other supplies. You know that generally these are the things that you spend for art supplies and, you know, pencils and notebooks and whatnot. Um, so those are the kind of things that are in here. I, I do understand your point, um, but I, 
I don't consider that to be that just this year we're going to buy technology-related items and we're going to need a mouse and a printer and whatnot. Those are things that you need to continue your normal course of business. So what you're saying is that if, if um, use my example of smart board, if Dr. Ajay feels that we're going to need smart boards in one of the schools, that's not in here anywhere. It is not. You know, some, some of the, um, the costs incurred on this, you know, you can, um, you know, in talking with Mr. Booth, you can foresee that um, personal computers and laptops and television sets, which we have in the high school, um, those kinds of things, they have a shelf life. You know, so you can, you, can, um, you can bet that after a certain number of years, you're going to have to budget for so many replacements just to kind of keep things rolling because, you know, we have television sets that go down and personal computers that stop working. And so, um, you know, there, there is that replenishment piece as well, just to those basic technological supplies that we have. Mr. Mudgeon and Mrs. Avanzaro. Yeah, I have several uh, issues I'd like to bring up. First of all, I'd like to say with respect to this, uh, the budget process and uh, structural deficits, we incurred a structural deficit of $1.5 million, $1.6 million in fiscal year 12. And that was partly due because of the reduction we took when we went to, to court with the town and then we went to the, went to the uh, judge and then, in fact, the judge took $266,000 away from us. So we had, we had budgeted $1.1 million as part of our structural deficit for 2012, and that was in there. Unfortunately, we had to pull out another 400000 400000 because of lost revenues for Jamestown and some other areas. So, in fact, you know, when we talk of structural deficit, we've already been there and done that, okay? And, but my point is, is when we have a revenue, we accumulated that in the past, and we have a responsibility to some degree to put that either give it back to the taxpayers through a reduced rate, in the taxes, or spending on something wisely. And I realize we have to go through that, and I look forward to, to doing that. Maybe it's a combination of the, of the, of the, uh, of the two or three t t issues, and I sh I'm sure the council should have that in mind. Okay. With that said, I'd like to go to page 46 of the budget. <coughs> okay. Excuse me, I was on 46, that's where the numbers were coming from, excuse me. Next one I'd like to look at is we have an obligation to provide a budget for the cafeteria as well as a, a grants to the town council. Uh, they, we did it last year, and they appropriated amounts last year, and I have them here if we want. Uh, I assume that we're going to send, apparently, in our budget that we haven't approved yet, okay, a million dollars for the cafeteria fund an enterprise fund, and the town council has got to uh, uh, appropriate that money. In addition, uh, government revenue. What page are you working off of, Bill? This one's on 56, John. Jump to 56. Is the uh, enterprise fund for the cafeteria. I don't believe we're operating that in a deficit. Well, I didn't say that. I just said we. I, I think we're going to. Uh, myself, but regardless, we owe the town council and we, the school committee, have got to approve the cafeteria fund budget. The town council approved it last year, was submitted, and also for special revenue. So those are two things we have to do. Now, with respect to page 56, you know, we're projected, uh, we went from $1.2 million, $2 million down to $1 million, okay, the cafeteria expenses, and in fact, I had asked that question some, you know, a couple of weeks ago, three or four weeks ago. Yet the audit, in the audit, they projected a one hundred and fifty thousand dollar deficit for fiscal year thirteen. So I would like to get an input back where where we stand today, and are we going to make our one million dollar budget for the uh, cafeteria fund? How do we stand on that? Uh, I know you don't have the numbers, so I'd like to get back and get a projection on. That number, because actually last year we had to pump in two hundred eight thousand dollars into the cafeteria fund, and like something like five hundred thousand over the last three and a half years. So that's essential. One, 
I think we need to, we need to uh, appropriate that money, and we bet, you know, we should make sure that we're comfortable with the, the numbers that are in there. Well, we're going to come back and do the same thing we have year after year. We're going to pump money into the cafeteria, which may not be a problem, but, the, but it, is, it is a tax burden, and, a, and the community should know that. The next so issue. Mr. Um, Dr. Ajay, respond to that. Mr. Mosh, we're not projecting a deficit in that area. I, I, didn't, say, I didn't say, Dr. you were. I, I just said, like, no, no, what it is. All I'm saying is the auditor said they projected a hundred and fifty. We can address that at a future meeting. Yeah, sure. sure. Okay. I don't know but where they got that from. What we're saying now, but. we're not projecting that we're saying the auditor is wrong. Yeah, okay. That's fine. So I just the auditor for FY13 projected that? Yes. It's in the audit. It's in the audit. Oh, I didn't see that. I, I think no. that the one thing you have to remember, too, that the big changes that you made in food service was because of last year in June. So a lot of those employees fell off of benefits. I just, I'm not so that was what really shored that up. Bringing your to the attention of what the auditor said in this year's audit. Okay. Okay? And I can probably find that if you want. Oh, I'll find it. It wasn't okay. brought to my attention. Uh, anyway, that's, uh, that's something. But nonetheless, whatever the, we think it is, we owe the town council a projection on what we expect, okay, because they have to appropriate that number, and they did that last year for the first time, as well as all our special revenues are the same thing. Now, let's just clean up the uh, budgeting stuff. I'd like to go to – I'd like to also mention that we haven't submitted to the town council in a formal – manner is we, we, we have a plan, but we have not submitted to the town council an $800,000 request for, for capital improvement monies. So uh, I think we need to do that. I know we have a CIP plan, but the town council doesn't have to act to a CIP plan. They should be acting to a budget request that should be in our budget, at least in my opinion. Uh, in I'd like to bring your attention to page 83 of the town budget. She has budget. The school budget, Mr. Yes. And this, 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 when you get there, this is an issue that comes up with Jamestown every year. And, in fact, uh, I think we need to take some action to look into the Jamestown issues again in terms of revenues. I think we're shortchanging the uh, community. Uh, and our taxpayers again, if nothing else, because Jamestown pay, pays uh, on a, a, a prior two-year cost, which is something like 10 percent of what our expenditures are. So that's certainly a cost. But if you look at page 83. I believe the Jamestown pays member our audited amount for the high school. I, 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 and so the high school amount will be different than what is our net okay. pupil cost by the district. May, may I finish? May I finish here, please? Yes. Okay. Uh, regardless, I just want to give you a little illustration of why we need to look into that and we need to get our act together as a school committee with respect to the contract. First of all, you notice in here, Dr. Ajay has pointed out here, the fiscal year 11 cost is $14,000 a student, North Kingstown students. If you look at this other chart uh, down below, it's $24,873 for Jamestown students. Actually, I, I actually have a comment for that, Mr. Mosh. Yeah, I'll let Craig finish because I'm going to – I think I know where you're going, okay? In, in fact, that $24,000, $25,000 is wrong. You're right. Okay? Thank you. It is wrong because that only divides their cost by 500 students. It should be by 700 students. Their population is 700 students. But when you figure all the stuff out again, even if you put the 700 students back in there, the cost per student is about $21,000 a student. It's about 17. 17. Well, I just ran the numbers, okay, and we can do it, but it's 17. Let's say, say I think it's closer to $20,000, okay? And uh, because I think the budget's up around 12, 12 million bucks, so divide 700 into 12 million and see what that comes out to be, something like that. Anyway, my point is, that's a hell of it. Excuse me. It's a big difference between fourteen thousand and eighteen to twenty thousand dollars. So why is it that a student, okay, Jamestown can be paying even if it's eighteen thousand dollars a student, they can't pay North Kingstown fourteen thousand dollars a student. 
I think we need to look at that. We may need to get some professional people in here to look at that, or maybe the Budget Committee will take it as a challenge to look at again. There's a great source of revenue there, and I believe we're shortchanging our taxpayers. Thank you. I'm going to have um, and Mrs. Um, Held respond to that. Okay. Um, I would like to um, say that the figure is closer to 18,000. Uh, I think it's 17.8 based on the last figure available from uh, Ride, and we, before they okay. switched to the UCOA charts, the last figure that they published had a footnote explaining that discrepancy, that they can't, don't count our high school population. Um, the difference, I think, education at different levels does cost different amounts. Um, high school student costs different amounts to educate than a kindergartner. Um, I think that happens in every district. One thing I'd like to point out about your per pupil, your per pupil cost of 14 is that that includes transportation and some things that you don't pay for for our students. Mm -hmm. So that is part of the explanation for why our Rates might be a little less than your per pupil costs. We transport those students. You know you say and so that enough times the transportation the of our high school students mm -hmm. does increase our per pupil costs because we're coming across the bridge with those students. Sure. Um, I understand. A couple hundred so thousand. Some of the, and the fact that, um, so we have a total amount of cost, which includes the high school students, um, that is different. Um, oh. you, the, I, I would like to point out also that you make, a, you realize a net profit or gain uh, to your revenues of over a million dollars for the Jamestown students as it is. Our taxpayers are very um, curious as to why we can't get a better deal than we already have because you're making a profit of over a million dollars by having our students here. So we feel we're paying a fair share. I know you had commented about how the cost had not gone up sufficiently in your mind yeah. uh, for a few years. It is The formula is based on your per, per pupil costs. Those have gone down. You have decreased your budgets. So the formula that reflects our costs is based partly on your per pupil costs, which have not increased. They've, in fact, gone down. I, I understand. Wait, let me finish, please. Yeah. Um, so I do think that the formula is a reasonable one. We pay a share of administrative costs. We pay for uh, the formula is negotiated in good faith uh, on both sides, I believe. And we believe it is totally fair to Jamestown taxpayers um, because you are realizing a really significant financial gain by having our students here, not to mention some of the other benefits that accrue to us and to you by having the extra students here. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't disagree with you, Dan. I'm going to interject I, here. I'm going to interject. I, no. Respond, um, please. Uh, no, I'm going to interject. Right now, we've had an interesting back and forth among committee members, but we have been talking for the last 25 minutes. and. And I'm not exactly sure where the committee is going at this point. I guess my question to the committee is, you have taken a vote, you have finalized a vote, and so we have a budget to send off to the town council. Is there anything more that the committee is going to do here tonight? Because if there is not, then we can basically continue to have the, your, you could um, ask administration questions, but at the same time, it is the sort of thing of, if there's no more votes to be taken, we have essentially completed our agenda tonight. And I would say that we can adjourn and go home. So that is my question is, where does the committee member want to go? Because I've seen numerous hands about different questions on the budgets, and I'm wondering where we're going here, folks. So, Mr. Cerisi. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm just going to make a couple of quick comments, and I'm hopefully done for this evening. You're done. <laughs> <laughs> Just to reiterate the comments made by Ms. Held, the per pupil, you know, to say all these, these numbers and turn to this page and turn to that page, to the person that's wet behind the ears out there listening to all of this, it, it, you know, it all sounds great and it all makes sense. But to reiterate some of the comments that Ms. Held made, when you say the per pupil cost is X amount of dollars, you're quoting the per pupil cost for the district-wide average per pupil cost. Jamestown does not have students at our elementary schools. They don't have students at our middle schools. They only have students at our high school. So if I'm Jamestown folks, I want to pay what the per pupil cost averages for the high school students because they don't have students in our elementary schools or middle schools. 
So why would they want to pay the district-wide per pupil cost? They want to pay the high school per pupil cost. That's what they're paying. That's what we quote them. That's what they're paying. But yet, year after year, for the last 100 years, you keep quoting this district-wide number and saying Jamestown pays 2,000 or 4,000 less than the district, than this number. And the number you're quoting is the district-wide number. You're not quoting the high school per pupil cost. Secondly, and hopefully lastly, when you say turn to page 56 in the budget, uh, you know, the, the school enterprise cafeteria, we need to vote on this. We need to realize what you're saying. Turn to page 56 in the budget. We just voted on the budget. We need to vote on this. Yes, it's on page 56 in the budget, and we just voted on the budget. So when you say we don't Excuse vote me. on this, or we, we need didn't. To it's to not in the budget number that we appropriated. Mr. The million Mr. dollars Mr. is not Mr. part Mr. of it. Mr. Cerisi has the floor right now. Thank you, Madam Chair. So when you say we need to vote on this and we need to send this to the town council, you're saying it's on page 56 in the budget. We just voted on the budget. It's not it's in the budget, Larry. It's not in that money. It's not in six in the budget. When you say, when you yeah, say, I'm going to defer to Mrs. No, no, King. No, 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 no. no. I, I'd like to finish, I, Mrs. Page. I'm, right. I have the floor. And then I'll defer to Mrs. Carroll after that. When you say that the CIP is not in the budget. You say turn to page 59, our CIP is there, it's not in the budget. You just said turn to page 59 in the budget. This is the budget we just voted on that we will be sending to the town council. So when you say we're not voting on this, we're not putting it in the budget, we're not requesting it in the budget, but yet at the same time you're saying turn to this page in the budget. This is what we're voting on, this is what we're sending. May I respond, please? Mrs. Carroll. Mr. Mudge, I believe the questions you're bringing up tonight in terms of what is voted on and is not voted on has been um, brought up by you for several years and has been addressed. I believe you went to Ride on the issue, and I believe Ride told you that we, we, we follow the procedure and what we do. I believe you went to Superior Court on the issue a couple of years ago, and it was thrown out of Superior Court. That's, that's asked, not true. You've asked the same question year All after the year, I believe, and I believe that each time, wherever you go asking the question, the, the answer is the same, that it's not necessary. I know you feel this way. I know you, we've had discussions years ago about it. But as you know, every time it's brought to ride, the Rhode Island Department of Education has told you that the process we follow is a correct and an appropriate process. That's, I, I disagree with you. For simple, for, here's a simple reason, Liz. We're sending a new budget. We will probably send a budget we appropriated tonight at 58 million point, whatever, six. That doesn't include a million dollars of cafeteria expenditures. That's not part of that number, okay? That's not part of the appropriated number. Plus, the grants are not part of the appropriated number. Let me just ask you, Mr. Mudge, didn't you bring this to the attention of Carolyn Diaz at Ride, and didn't she tell you that the way we do it is, is fine? Yeah. You had a meeting well, with all I'm telling you is what the town council has asked for. And by the way, the town council has, we are obligated to provide the town council a budget in the manner which they want it. And last year, they appropriated a cafeteria fund budget for us as well as a grant funded budget for us. Now, I have it right here if you'd like to see it. And I think we ought to look at it for this year because we may be exceeding our grant expenditures okay, that the town council appropriated. Now, you may feel that the town council doesn't have the authority to appropriate the cafeteria fund or the grant fund. I disagree. Okay, Rhode Island General Law disagrees, and Wright has not said anything on that. In fact, just the opposite. Okay, just the opposite, because Ride in their numbers of 14000 and 20000 okay, include all the grant money, and they include the cafeteria cost. In the $14,000 that's in there, I'm telling you. Yes, it is. Okay, I'm going to call Mr. Biscardi. Okay. All right, all right. Just to clarify, again, for me, because I'm obviously not quick enough to pick all this stuff up. <laughs> I see on page 56 there is a page in our budget book that talks about the Food Service Enterprise Fund. Yep. Ms. King, is that, is that number actually in the 50, part of the 58 million? No. Right. <clears throat> Same on page 53. So. Is it required to be? Yeah, I guess. Those, those amounts of money are, are 
pass-throughs, okay? So the only thing on the food service fund that we would have in our general fund is if we believed we were going to run a deficit in that fund because the whole idea of an enterprise fund is that it is self-funding. It either makes money or it breaks even, okay? The grant funds also are a pass-through. So just it's, it's sort of like the state aid, but the grant fund money, we find out, we, we actually are finding out in April what our total grant funds are going to be for this year that we're in. So that's the timing of all that. But that's a pass-through. So if we get $5,000 in grant money, it goes to the town, and then we get to use that money. Right. So, so it's, it's no, no. merely a, a, you can't, we don't spend more than the grant money, and we don't spend less because on the grants you, you do right. need to use that money. So, so, so it's just a pass-through. So in theory, and please everybody, all the, all the folks at COSI and everybody else that's grant-funded, in theory, when grant money goes away, that program can go away as well. Correct. Therefore, it will not impact our budget. And, and it is, you know, I understand that the town appropriates it when they get the final number, but really, to be very honest with you, if, if I told Michael Embry right now I'm getting $20 million in grants and I need you to appropriate, appropriate that for me and I'm going to tie you into that number, I might get $10 million. It might not be $20 million. So that's merely a pass-through. The general fund is the important piece, and that's the $58 million that was just, just voted on. All the other pieces, we do need to provide that information. We're required by RIDE to provide that in our budget package, and it's there. Um, but it is not something that, uh, I'll be very honest with you, it's the grant funding is not even something that you really even know what those final numbers are going to be. I mean, you're, you're really throwing an estimate based on, you know, we have sequestration issues. We don't even know on March 1st those grant numbers might be cut, so we would have to adjust right. our grant funding because we can only spend on grants what we're going to get. Right. Thank you. Mr. Jones. Um, um, thank you. So just, just to clarify a point, though, um, um, so, for example, though, in the restricted fund is, is use of buildings right now. So uh, does that money end up to the town and reappropriated back to us as pass-through since it's money that, that we invoice and the checks come to us? Yes. So is that the right place for that to be there? It has to be. That, uh, you know, we had discussed this before. According to RIDE, use of buildings is a restricted fund. Right. So we can reappropriate that. Um, I believe what we've done in the past is we have actually applied that to reduce custodial fees because that's primarily what those charges are for if we had overtime charges for custodians to cover the events or whatnot. So normally that money had been used back to, to offset those uh, increased fees that we're seeing. Okay. Um, but according to RIDE, that is supposed to be a restricted fund under UCOA. Okay. So for... For fiscal year 14, since we have a GCA contract, right, and I believe the contract number is set that's in the budget, so what are we, what are we doing with the use of building fund revenue? Have we reduced expenses anywhere else in that, or is that, so that's anticipated revenue we are just not recognizing, nor expenses that we are not reducing. And so this is part of my discussion of... Well, but the only thing you do have to understand, too, is that that contract is different from how we would normally operate with our custodians, and we might not incur the same overtime charges, hence we would not make the same revenue as we had in the past. It, well, so in other words, where we had to pay a custodian before overtime, GCA tries to work it so that it is a swing shift and there's no overtime. It's all part of that contract that's already in there. So I wouldn't be billing for something that I'm not getting charged. So your, your use of building fees might be significantly less because of that. Well, but, but that's a committee decision to make for, I assume, setting the rate for well, next year. Well, what the rate is set, it, policy. the policy is set that you charge X for the use of the room or the building and you charge X for the cost of the custodial building. So, okay. So, um, all right. So thank you for that. So I assume same with the, the capital reserve appropriation is sitting in restricted funds. So, um, so would you clarify how then that's purely based for the town council to, to appropriate um, 
are we, and I assume so, on that area, we are giving them guidance, at least in terms of, of the SIP plan is our guidance to them? Right, and that goes through the Asset Management Committee. And um, I attended, and Mr. Biscardin and Mrs. Page attended a meeting uh, probably two months ago now where we had presented that CIP document to them and the $800,000 request. So it goes in this budget um, as the CIP request. Um, it's not part of general fund. It's a CIP. It's, it's capital. It's completely separate. And if the and that's presented to the town council, town council by the asset management committee, if they propose that it be allocated to us, then they propose it. If they don't, they don't. And uh, last question, if mm -hmm. you could bear with me. So, I, I would again advise the committee that you know I appreciate that much discussion can still continue. Um, I am concerned though sending over something that has a state aid revenue that is $55,004 lower than what we know the town has told us to use. And so I would make a motion that we at least use the fiscal year 13 state aid number in the budget we send over um, for um, on the revenue side um, for that, since we know that's the guidance we've, we've, we've been given. Um, and I would just... Um, say that again. I made a motion. Thank I'll you. I'll second that motion. The reason why that that number is lower is because we are anticipating less students. So if we do pass that motion, we would need to keep in mind that if we do find out that our enrollment is going to be lower, our state aid will be lower as well. We will have to come back and address that issue. Your question. Jim? Mr. Beskarden and then Mrs. Avanzato. Thank you, Ms. Page. It, 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 Help me out again. I believe we were instructed by Mr. Embry to use LY figures on that. Am I correct or not? Uh, yes, um, unless we believe we might have lower enrollment, because lower enrollment will impact your number. And we're not going to know until March what our enrollment figures are. We do anticipate they're going to be lower. So what I did was I had asked Ride if they would recalculate for me FY13 funding based on 100 less students. And that was the number that they gave me, which was the $50,000 less. Now, the other number that Mr. Jones is referring, that's $166,000 more in the governor's budget, that's, that's the 166 in addition. Um, so, you know, certainly um, that can definitely be done on the, the $50,000, but I would just say that we would need to keep in mind that we may have to come back and, and revisit that if we do indeed have lower enrollment because our state aid will be lower. Whatever is in the governor's budget, it's got to be based on that state aid calculation, and if our numbers come in lower, then the number's going to be lower. So what you're saying, you're saying that the state aid could very well be less this year for this proposed budget than it is for FY13. FY is that correct? Well, no. See, here, here's the problem. If we, if we budgeted exactly how Michael Embry would want us to budget, we would bu be budgeting the $50,000 more. Okay? That was what, 10-7, right? Was that the number? Yeah. Okay. And the governor's budget does anticipate an increase. And that's based on the funding formula, the acceleration of the funding formula. Actually, I don't think acceleration was in there, but the spread of the funding formula increase over the five to seven years, okay? So the anticipation is not that we would get less funding, but we don't know that that number is going to go through on the governor's budget. And that's why Mr. Embry recommends that you don't go lower, you don't go to that number. Right. He's asking to use a number that we know right. that we have, which was this year's, and it's historically never, ever been you have you've never given we've never been given less than we have the previous year is that correct that is correct that's, that's the logic anyway that is the logic exactly so if you take that logic and now apply it as i did and say okay so i started with my baseline of what we're getting in fy13 however i do believe we will have lower enrollment based on our projections you know, you can see it go either way. Uh, John, could I add uh, something uh, to no, yours, John? No, uh, not yet. Not right now. Well, you can't want to I, don't ask me. I'm not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're going to ask the chair for that. I'd like to stay on the same subject matter. That's all, man. Uh, I will call on you after Mrs. Avanzato, Mr. Okay, Mudge. Thank you. I'm on the same subject matter. Uh, I think that I'm comfortable with 
i think that's this is why we hire a business manager and i think that we need to listen to the recommendations of our business manager i very much appreciate the town managers responsiveness to what was our request actually to help us out with the number that we should that he thought we should use for state aid i don't know if he had that particular conversation about the drop in enrollment and took into account what Mrs. King is taking into account. But, again, I do appreciate his answer. I know that the Wadovic report also recommended using the same number. But I see the logic in what we're doing, and I don't want to end up on the wrong end where we're putting ourselves in, in difficulty with that. And I think this is why we, we make budget assumptions. If the town council doesn't accept those or wants to cut us or whatever, that's their decision. But... We're entitled. We're not going to, I'm not going to second guess every line of this budget of what the business manager has recommended. We may ask questions. We may change some things. But um, I, frankly, I, I understand the logic of why uh, Mrs. King has recommended what she has. And I guess that's it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mudge and Mr. Yeah. Jones, before okay. you speak, I want to give the superintendent a yeah, I've got two uh, just two questions. I, and that'll, that'll I be will it. let you speak after the superintendent. Oh, excuse me. I just want to underscore something Mrs. Avanzano said with that Wadovic audit. You know, last year um, was my first year as superintendent, third year in the district as um, assistant superintendent and superintendent. And, and, you know, it was a learning year because we actually went through a, a, a point where we had a lawsuit with the town and an audit, a BEP audit um, uh, that the town conducted. Um, and those, these kinds of things that we're talking about tonight were the very issues that were brought up. And they um, made it clear that they wanted us in, in all of our budgeting practices to be as conservative as possible. And so, um, you know, in looking at last year's number, that is true. But last year's number, if, if the enrollment goes down, the, the, the state aid is going to go down. So. It, you know, I, I understand that when the governor proposes something, that it looks good, um, and that the town manager has said, you know, last year's number. But last year's number, based on enrollment, if all if enrollment stays the same, then it's last year's number. But we're not necessarily anticipating that. We're not sure what that's going to be. So, um, you know, in years past, we've gotten our hands slapped because we weren't conservative enough. So. Um, so I think, you know, we're, we're handling this the right way. And, and I think we would be, um, we would regret what would happen if we were not conservative and found out that um, these issues did not trend in our favor. Uh, and then we would have to go through, you know, more rounds of, of cuts that we did not anticipate. So thank you. Mr. Um, Mudge and then Mr. Jones. Yeah, a couple of things. Where'd John go? Oh, yeah. You know, I, I've got this memo the town manager sent. So I went down and talked to him. And I think we, somebody, maybe somebody else might want to talk to him because he carefully pointed something out to me. He said, I would not, however, assume that reducing the state aid number or keeping it flat will garner additional taxpayer money from the council, i.e., they will reduce your budget by that amount, like they did last year. He's not going to make okay. up. The, he's not going to make up the, okay. the short. So I understand that. So the council will. The floor right so, now. so basically, okay, uh, we're going to whatever we're going to pay for it, and that's probably the way to do it. So I don't have a problem there. But finally, I, I would I would like to say, uh, Dr. Shea, you know, last year we made some mistakes. We're talking about sixty thousand here, fifty here. We lost $380,000 of Jamestown revenue the year before under our own nose. That's why we were in court. That's why we got our, our, our wings clipped and it cost it, you know, $266,000 of reduction in the budget. Finally, I'll say to our business manager and the superintendent and anybody else, did the town council appropriate last year or what did the town council appropriate <coughs> for the school cafeteria fund and the special revenue fund last year. First, let's start with this. Did the town council appropriate budgets for those numbers, and are we obligated to abide by them as we are the general fund monies? However, if we get less in grant fund, okay, or if we have a deficit in the food service, the town is not going to make that up. That's, that's not this issue. Did it's the, the same town council question, Mr. Mudge. 
the town council, the town might be appropriating ten million dollars in grants. But if we get eight, they're not giving us ten. Well, why don't we appropriate? Material or not, that is the fact of the matter. Well, the fact of the matter is you're supposed to get an appropriation of what you expect. Why don't we put in a hundred million dollars for the general fund then? All I'm saying is, by law and by state law and by the town charter, they appropriate the number. That's all I'm saying. And the number is in your budget package. Are we going to? I'm May I suggest, are we Mr. going to appropriate the, hundred, uh, the million for the cafeteria fund and the special revenue fund? I'm going to give the floor to Mr. Jones. Uh, well, I, I'm sorry. I, I would say two things. One is, is I, I, I would agree that if what Mr. Tracy says is we're submitting this minus the general fund enhancements that have been made over the last month, then that should be, be made a little clearer that we should have a motion to send these numbers right, over, because right, 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 right. I, I agree with what Mr. Mudge is saying, that we can't say 58.5 is a general fund, but we're also sending this book over. So maybe you can address just, that just, after, because let me just finish my one point. My second point to Mrs. King is we do enrollment in March. You know, the, the state aid formula is a complicated formula based on free and reduced lunch, enrollments, and all that. You know, the state can't even get out of its way with data we've given them in October <laughs> to post it. So there's no way... You know, otherwise, I think Commissioner Gist or someone on the governor's staff would be doing exactly what you did on every school district and going, we can cut, uh, you know, or someone in the General Assembly would be going, we can whack North Kingstown this, and we're not alone in this communities. So I don't disagree that keeping a handle on that is might affect the funding formula in years four, five, six, and seven. I also know that we're getting students in in those years that probably are going to work the formula the other way because they're probably going to be free and reduced lunch students. And it's sort of a zero-sum game across the, the thing. My point is that there's being conservative and there's just being a recognition that every year with the governor's budget in comes in in that. If the commissioner was really, and the governor, because, you know, they're operating under the same sort of thing of going to the General Assembly. My point being is that we did this last year. The council made us do this, made the school committee do this last year. We made a lot of cuts based on that, cuts you couldn't reduce. It's 55000 It's not conservative to say use last year's numbers when we know that enrollment may be going down, but enrollment is, is also shifting demographically, that there's no way those March numbers are going to impact what the General Assembly approves at the last minute in May or June. And so it's just a point that if we know that the town council is going to hold a different number than that, we might as well use the number. In fact, that we can, we'll can we come back here in July, and, and I'll give a big mea culpa if I'm wrong. Um, but I suspect we'll come back here in July or, or September and go, you know, the town council owes us $100,000 more dollars. Um, so I don't think, I talk to my other committee members, it's a huge stretch to at least use la last year's number. Right. Especially with a $1.3 million Stacey, surplus. Remember, we have a motion on the floor. Mm. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Jones, for um, pointing that out and clarifying that. Um, just as we've done in past years, this, what we have in front of us right now is the superintendent's preliminary budget, and we make our votes and make our adjustments, and when we get to a final number to send to the town council, um, the book will be redone and updated to reflect the work that we've done since the preliminary presentation from the superintendent. And Isn't that tonight's number, Larry? That's what the council will get, and that's what we will get. That's tonight's number. Whatever number we vote on tonight. Yeah. Right? And I think Mrs. King, correct me if I'm wrong, you'll make those adjustments in the book, and that's what you will submit to the council is a, a new budget reflecting of the changes that have made since this budget was preliminary. preliminary right, and we exactly. would call that the frequency. superintendent's recommended budget. Right. As a, this is the superintendent's recommended budget. But it becomes a school committee budget. And yeah. when we vote on a final number, which is tonight, that's the school committee's right. adopted budget. Right. All right, we have a motion on the floor and a second. Um, I'll say something. I. I Last year, we did have the Wadovic report telling us that we needed to be more conservative. And so while I understand the, the purpose of the motion, 
I would rather err in the side of caution and basically say, I'm going to guess that we could be getting the cut. If we have money later, great. We'll, we know we'll put it to use. But right now, I do not feel comfortable in, um, in going on hope that we may get something more from the state that um, by all indications of what our numbers are looking at right now, that we are going down. So that will be my answer. So I, I think um, we're going to take the roll call vote. Ms. Berglund, could you read uh, back the motion? Mr. Jones's motion that we use FY13 state aid number in the budget we send over on the revenue side, since we know that's the guidance we've been given. Larry Sarisi. No. Robert Jones. Yes. William Mudge. Yes. Kimberly Page. No. Linda Avanzato. No. John Biscarden. No. Motion fails four to two. Thank you. Mr. Sreesey. Can I make a motion to adjourn at this time? Second. All right. One just quick. Are we going to approve, uh, are we going to follow our responsibilities and adopt the, the enterprise number and the special revenue number tonight? No. Why not? Because we don't have to. But we you don't, don't have, have to? to? No. You're saying we don't have to. Thank you. Okay. Just the conversation sure. we just had, Mr. Munch. Excuse me? It's the conversation you just had with Mrs. Carroll. Uh, madam, a businessman, do you, real, do you know what was uh, adopted last year for these two budgets? All right. You've you? received your answer, I think Mr. you should Munch. look them up then. Okay. You've received your answer. We have a motion on the floor and a it's second. Unacceptable. Is there any further discussion? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you.